Hello and welcome back statistics students. We are still inside of chapter 9 and we are still working on the baseball example. I've already done five videos over this so if you haven't seen any of those videos you definitely need to go back and at least watch the very first one so you know the data that we're working with. I'm on to number six here and I'm trying to draw and interpret a residual plot of the re-expressed data. I'll just remind you the re-expressed data we have done the x with log of the y's which we stored in our calculators as L1 and L4 a long time ago. Okay, If you're confused on where I got that from you need to go back and watch the third video. So here now what I want to do is I'll talk about this residual. Remember that we in order to have a residual plot we have to have x and we want the resids as the y now. Okay, Well, the residuals need to be created. How you do that is you just need to run a least squared regression line. Okay, Make sure that you're doing it on L4 because it does say here that we want the re-expressed data. Okay, you No need to store it. Just calculate that. And in the previous three videos, I've done this. Okay, I've done this in the previous three videos, but there is another time just in case you didn't see it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going through and I am going to kick out this as my scatter plot. So I go to second, y equals to bring up the stat plot, go to my first plot here. Now down below, I'm going to change, oh, I don't need to change the first one. I still want x to just be the L1, right, the actual x's. But this needs to be resid. And it actually says exactly just like I wrote it here, somewhere in the calculator. It's kind of hard to see on mine, but right here where it says, or above the stat key, we can see that it says list. We hit second, stat, and then go down until we see resid. Oh, and I passed it. It's right there on eight. This one right here says resid. Click on that. You can't type this in using the alpha key. You actually have to find resid underneath the list, okay? And then we hit zoom and hit nine. And then we see this residual plot. Now, we draw this just like this here, right? Um, these are still, this is L1 down here. This is the year since 1900. But the y's, these are the residuals, which is why it's above and below the x-axis. We have some positive residuals and we have some negative. And then we just fill these in. Okay, We're just going to fill these in. Now, ideally, we would not see any type of pattern here. Um, and clearly, when I look at it, I do kind of see this like general like up and down slope kind of thing going on. Ideally, we want to see random scatter. Okay, we want random scatter. We don't see that here, and it gives makes us a little suspicious. But because the R value up here from our previous example is so high, we probably feel pretty good using this model. Okay, but know that here we really would want random scatter. And that's how you create a residual plot using your calculator and what you're looking for after you create it. Yes, it is important that we put the year and the resid labels up here.